Uh, thanks a lot, uh, CUG Mumbai, giving me the opportunity to share my experiences. So in this uh, webinar, I am going to share my experiences. It was my first time when I attended a site course symposium in Florida. So it's a very big digital event uh, in the digital uh, landscape. So I will be sharing what are the things uh, have been showcased uh, at a site course symposium. So we have to wait or I shall proceed? I think you can proceed. Yeah, OK. So the agenda of the today's session is the introduction this year theme and the important topics of Sitecore Symposium 2019. So it happened in the November, so it's already a too late for this session. But I will try to cover some of the important topics uh, which are useful for the community. So currently, I am working with the Mindtree as a senior technical architect. And I will be a part of the content and commerce capability where I will be working on the RFPs and the multiple projects. And uh, that is the, my current role in the current organization. So about sessions, right? So in this session, I am going to share my experience, which I already told you. And I also will be highlighting some of the overview of the uh, this uh, Sitecore MVP session. This is specifically for the Sitecore MVPs. So in, the, in this summit, uh, the Sitecore Symposium 2019, right? So it is this summit uh, have joined by the many Sitecore partners, developer, client across the globe. And uh, this year, around uh, 3,500 to 4,000 uh, persons have joined this uh, event at or Orlando, Florida. And it was a four day event and there were the many keynotes and many highlights was there and many client came and they have presented their use cases also. So as a first time attendee, it was a very good experience for me because uh, I have attended a other, uh, uh, you can say that the summit uh, at the organization level at outside the organization, but uh, for the particular product base, it was my first experience outside of India, which I have joined it. And uh, in this, uh, what was happened that the theme, you can say that the theme of the this year theme was that human connecting connection in a digital world. So the means, uh, it means like that they have promoted very well in the symposium itself. And they try to explain about how the digital uh, technology can helpful by connecting to the human and they can help them. So there was a very good uh, use case, or you can say that the story some of the client have showcased EPAM with their uh, client. So they their client was making a, some of the, you can say that uh, a, a technical uh, product uh, for the people who are not able to walk, who are not able to listen the music like that. So with the help of a digital, they have created a, some sorts of sites, or you can say that some site of product, so which helps to track them, the user emotions, and they are able to fulfill with the help of the site core AI and the other modules, right? So in this team, everyone talking about these teams and the user have presented the case studies. So where I was telling the client name that the client name was the not impossible labs. So what they were doing that, uh, whoever the physical challenge, right? So they are not able to listen or they are not able to walk, right? So, so they find a way with the help of a digital technologies, how they can make it possible for those persons and they can make a, a use of the CMS, Sitecore CMS and how they can fulfill. So in this team, everyone talked about like a three ways of human connection in the customer experience. EX here uh, stands for the customer experience. So what they were explaining that uh, the site core CMO Peggy that uh, lead with your heart, cultivate trust with the authenticity and inspire the physical with the digital. So inspire the physical with the digital means which I was explaining one of the use case. So they are trying to say that it's not like that you will just build the, any application or anything. So you need to provide a better user experience. You need to physically connect with the people. Then only you can make a good user experience. So that was the theme. 
and now i will be sharing some of the important topics uh, which uh, have been uh, presented in the symposium so one of the to hot topic was the cycle as i said so this they are telling from the i think last 2017 the cycle was telling that we will be moving to the sas so in this what they have announced that uh, the sas will be available in the summer 2020 right it will be a sas based offering currently we are having a is based offering pass based offering and the managed cloud offering so this will be completely sas based Uh, so it will be it's delivered or they are working on this from the many years because wherever there will be no big need for the site core experience platform where we can sell this particular saas offering so that uh, the mid level market or the the client who just wanted to use the cms not the all the site core experience platform capability capabilities so they can utilize that so it's a new platform and it's not a module right on the existing platform and it's a platform as a service and it's a, having a full integration with the sitecore content hub also and uh, initial release what they are they're going to release in the summer 2020 it will be not to fulfill all the use cases of the sitecore but some of the use cases it is going to cover and uh, what they were telling that they are continuously investing and in, uh, into this saas platform so that it can be fulfill all the capabilities most of the capabilities which are present in the uh, current uh, site core platform and uh, as i said earlier that it will be for the lower mid markets and the mid size enterprise organization where suppose for example in the current market you are having a content full also that is also saas based offering and uh, if you don't want to utilize all the cms or the experience platform capability just the content so you can utilize the content it's a very Uh, cost effect effective as compared to stas so to compete those products side side core is coming up with this type of things and uh, if, if there what you can do that uh, the similar to the side core uh, current platform you can create the content and also they are trying to integrate uh, a predictive behavior into that so that if you are uh, Uh, adding any data related to anything then the automatically tagging they are trying to integrate the ai flavor inside into that and uh, it will also reduce the infrastructure cost uh, for the organization so with the help of that uh, you can roll out to the things very faster in the market and uh, other thing is site core ai right so they so what site core did that site core uh, i think from the last two years they were working with the microsoft Microsoft uh, is a first client for the Sitecore AI offering. So Microsoft have created a their uh, customer segment, or you can say that customer centric portal in the Sitecore, where they have utilized the Sitecore AI, and uh, they have successfully using these things. So the AI is is not a module; it's not a subscription. What you need to do that uh, you need to uh, uh, buy a Uh, saas based offering so that you can utilize the site core ai things and then you need to connect with the site core sales representative if you wanted to implement the site core ai so that site core data science team can help you to implement the use cases right and uh, microsoft have uh, utilize a complete capability of the site core ai and that's why uh, microsoft people or the technical people came and they have explained how they are using it so they have return uh, they have increased the return of investment when they have they are using the site core ai and their the productivity they are also increase in terms of the marketing people why this is site core ai is a uh, site core is pushing because what they are telling that earlier when we were used to implement the user persona in the website so first we need to design the user experience journey then from there we need to take the use cases or the user persona virtual user and we have to implement this right but when we will be using a this uh, site core ai right so it will automatically track the customer behavior and uh, it will implement the segmentation automatically user persona automatically on the basis of user behavior you do not need to manually or the marketer needs to manually design the goals and everything automatically it will take care it will design the user persona and it will implement that itself so that there will be no major task from the uh, marketer to utilize the site core experience platform 
so with the help of that uh, the work of the marketing people will be going to decrease in the near future and uh, what they are telling that uh, the site core auto personalization will be launched it's already in the market in the december they have launched it auto personalization is there and they are also created a one artificial intelligence dashboard specifically for the ai related where personalization metrics and segmentation you can see that which are automatically created and uh, other thing is the content hub so nowadays uh, uh, Sitecore is more emphasizing in selling the content hub itself because they have recently acquired the Style Lab. It's a Denmark based uh, company. Now they are telling uh, the name have been changed to the content hub. Content hub uh, is a generic word which is uh, explaining that it is uh, going to, uh, you can say that, uh, solve all the content prices in the market. So many of the other market leaders having a content hub as a platform. So recently, Sitecore have released a new version called a Content Hub 3.3, and it's a SaaS-based offering itself. It is nothing related with the. It is not directly integrated with the Sitecore. It's an independent product. So if you want to utilize, you need to separately buy the license for a SaaS. So it's based on the number of users who are going to use that, and. You can uh, integrate a Sitecore content hub with the DAM. DAM is is a, a digital asset management, and CMP is a content management platform, and MRM is I think stand for marketing something, right? So main point is that any of the digital uh, you can say that the product is going to use is the DAM and CMP. So in DAM you can create a your product, right? So MRM. Is called a marketing resource management. So in DAM, generally you will be creating or managing all the your digital assets, right? And CMP is a very useful product. Earlier we need to what we generally do it. Suppose if you are creating a any user experience platform, uh, and you are going to share the content with the many of the channels. So what you need to do it, you need to be rely on the some sort of the Salesforce based offering or the PIM or other things, right? So the beauty of the CMP is that if you want to target many channels and you need to provide the data to the another CMS also, what you can do that you can create a content inside the CMP, right? And uh, you can curate that content to the any channel. So it means that suppose you are going to create any article page, an article page having a article image, article description, and full description or any of the other related content. So you can create a data model in the Sitecore CMP as a part of an article, and with the help of a CMP connector, uh, which is out of the box, it's coming uh, from the Content Hub offering, and you can map that data into a Sitecore CMS itself. So whenever any data changes is happening at a Sitecore CMP site, automatically the connector is a, some Azure bus uh, uh, related thing is there. So you need to implement the Azure function also. It is based on the Azure function. So it will be continuously listening that if any content is being updated in the CMP, then it will automatically push that changes into the Sitecore site. So all the Sitecore CMP content will be added in the bucket item. So that if you are designing any article page, so you can use as a data sources of CMP content from the bucket list and you can do that. You can create the article page. And then you can apply the any uh, personalization or any CMS product related things you need to apply it. Apply it. So with the help of that, you can push the data to the any channel, and you can directly use the Sitecore DAM uh, marketing assets into the CMP content. So you can manage a content from one place independent of Sitecore, and you can distribute to the any other channel with the help of a content hub. So it's a seamless integration with the uh, Sitecore CMS and the other commerce solution, and uh, it's in addition to the in addition to that Sitecore Content Hub now provides enhanced reporting tool. So what it can help you to allow the marketers to easily analyze where the content is used across uh, the channels in Sitecore XP. So that is also reporting feature is coming into the Content Hub. And the other part, uh, other important topic was there is the Sitecore in Enterprise by Bass Legend. 
and the, the site core container. So in the best, uh, it shows that uh, what uh, he showcased that they have implemented a world's fastest deployment pipeline. Earlier, their application uh, was taking a, a more than seven hours in the deployment. So, so he showcased that uh, how they have uh, utilized the CI CD pipeline and they have customized uh, uh, some scripts in the terms of the PowerShell scripts. So with the help of that, they are having a multi-site implementation, how the code is being uh, implemented and what are the ways we need to implement it so that we can uh, improve the deployment down, uh, time. So he showcased the uh, complete demo on that and he showcased the uh, artifacts also, how much it's uh, decreased. And uh, Stephen, uh, now he left the Sitecore last week itself. So he show, he is closely working in the Sitecore Docker team and he showcased what are the other things uh, they are doing in the Sitecore Docker space. Currently Sitecore Docker is not uh, officially supported, but they are creating the Docker images for the each and every version of the Sitecore so that uh, you do not need to install all the things. You can just use the containerized approach and you can start your uh, development very fast. So earlier, uh, the Sitecore Docker images was not a part of the Sitecore official uh, GitHub repository. Now they have moved all the Sitecore Docker images uh, under the Sitecore, and uh, they have uh, doing a uh, lots of uh, improvements into the Docker images from the Sitecore product side. And also they have showcased like uh, now it, in the dockers, they have uh, showcased that uh, the MS build and the publishing profiles are integrated so that you can decrease the uh, publishing time of the component. And uh, what they are suggesting that we need to use the NUGET packages for any generic uh, UX. Suppose if you have created any uh, solution which needs to be used by any other solution or any other project. So it's better not to use a DLL as a reference. You can create a package and you can uh, use that. And they are also uh, emphasizing that you have to use the web deploy for the faster. And uh, once you are setting up a CI CD pipeline, you do not need to hard code it the parameter or the environment related variables. So you need to be use utilize the DevOps pipeline and you need to store the environment related variable there. So these are the new Docker images, which currently they have released it. And they have ordered their site for commerce images also earlier, it was not there. And uh, what they are telling that how they try to showcase the new instance request if you are receiving it, how they are internally doing it. So this is the request as per my understanding, suppose if you are requesting any demo or anything to the site core. So site core sales representative is connecting with the uh, site core internal team or the product development team and they are having their own application where they are filling, filling the request and automatically they are filling how much time this instance will be up. And they're also, they are utilizing the site core Docker to instantiate uh, any of the site core instance uh, for the use for some time of period. And uh, this the things which I was telling you that uh, Psycho Docker is not officially supported. It means that suppose if you are doing any production development and you are using the Psycho Docker, if any error is coming, then you need to replicate that error into a standalone machine. Then only Psycho supporting is going to help you. Otherwise, you have to resolve the error by your own. And they have also told that the uh, showcase that the new site code 9.3 now currently it's available. It's released in the December. So they have introduced a new UI called a new editing environment called a horizon. And uh, it will reduce the time for the content author and it will help in uh, doing the content authoring very fast. And it's providing a drag and drop type of things functionality, which is uh, simple to make changes in the modification. And uh, it is also giving a, you are having a Chrome browser, right? So you can simulate uh, a different, different uh, devices behavior. So same way Horizon is also helpful for you to instantiate or you can see the different uh, 
devices behavior and in horizon is a module which you have to install it so there are predefined steps are there if you will go to the uh, to the download.sitecore.net so you can find you can find your horizon and the prerequisites required for that and uh, other thing is that the performance metrics performance metrics uh, they have updated it means that they have improved the performance of the sitecore cms as well as the sitecore cd and uh, they have uh, introduced a some type of dashboard also which will show you the analytics and the optimization and uh, dashboard also showing the some of the new uh, reports also earlier you will be having just uh, less number of uh, analytics reports like uh, what is the how many what is the goal uh, you are being used many in your website and what are the user persona so they have introduced the many performance metrics is itself and they have improved in the marketing automation also so they have introduced a new template for the exm user also and uh, now earlier sitecore forms was not available as headless it was available only into the asp.net based implementation only now they have introduced the headless forms itself to compete with the salesforce form so that you can utilize the out of the box directly from the uh, headless implementation into your uh, uh, from the site code to the headless implementation and it will it's also contain a file upload and email confirmation feature itself these are the new features and uh, what they have did that uh, <clears throat> earlier you will be having a different different version for the site code xxa now they have matched the version of the site code as well as the module and uh, they have uh, improved the performance of the rendering itself and scriban they have introduced which is a fast powerful and uh, earlier you will used to use the token so they have replaced with the scriban it's a powerful than the tokens and they have also introduced a visual studio code extension for the development purpose also which can highlight the extension and uh, they have improved the search experience also in the xxa now moving to the jss so so earlier you cannot connect your local jss app with the remote instance suppose for example you have deployed your production site into any server so you cannot directly connect now that connectivity is available in the site for jss and uh, and now the mac user the user if you are doing the development not in the windows system in the mac system so you can also now able to debug the things in the mac system itself and some general enhancement in the sitecore x connect uh, they have include the uh, performance in the web tracker and the session expiration type of things and they have also improved the experience editor including the navigation control bars and uh, some type of uh, page modes they have uh, improved and the reporting module also have been approved uh, means improved and the data conference confidence fixes and the conversion rates update they have done it and some of the performance uh, improvement which i have ex explained you earlier so uh, this was a another good topic build gss uh, website with the blazor blazor is a uh, different technology where you can write a, a code using the dotnet core right it's a microsoft offering and you can write a code in the c sharp and you can implement a give a behavior of a asynchronous so it is an independent platform and the sitecore blazor is uh, driven by the sitecore community itself and uh, so what the, they have showcased it is uh, created by the cory and the gary and both have created this and currently it's in the you can say that the development stage itself so there are the some improvements so all the community members are doing it so they have showcased the poc so they have uh, included the blazor itself so that you can write a code in the asp.net environment itself by including the dotnet core related uh, coding and uh, you can deploy it as a jss uh, based application so you do not need to rely on the react js you can use the blazor to write a headless type of implementation and uh, how the signals are can be used and it is also showing and currently it's not supported by the uh, site core 
and it's not similar to the javascript framework it's a different it's a dot net core based uh, implementation so for example site ko jss by default uses a javascript like a regular uh, angular or the react js but uh, and they are uh, rendering hosts are different but the site ko rendering host is a uh, blazor so that's why the blazor technology have been used in this so it will allow you to build interactive web ui using the c sharp instead of the javascript okay so that is the high level so you can explore uh, that particular thing if you will google it or you can connect to the scory or the gary you will be able to receive it so they have inaugurated or they have released uh, uh, in november itself inside the symposium so that the, all the community member can use it so currently there is no uh, broad uh, development done on this it's just a uh, initi initiative they have taken it to use the blazor in the jss and other interesting things they have released is the site ko helix uh, 2.0 so so what they have explained uh, is that nick explain is that how we can uh, come over to the technical depth i already taken a one session on the helix 2.0 where i have explained what are the new improvement uh, have come it for example the technical depth right the technical depth uh, is a measurement how untidy your code is so whenever you are writing a code in a less uh, time then you will be not able to write a precise code which will be able to scalable in the near future right so and it's also not readable so those things are coming as a technical depth so suppose if you will give any complex task to your junior developer without discussing it then only the technical depth depth also can come into the your application so lack of team uh, means expertise and you are not aware about the package solution like the helix is based on the package solution so if you are not aware about that how to implement the reusability how to packaging the your code base right so then these type of uh, things can comes into the picture so to avoid that you need to first understand what is the package solution so if you will go to the uh, site ko helix documentation and go through so they have explained each and everything in detail so how to use the dependency injection and all those things and to uh, means to remove the technical depth so you need to create a component library you need to implement the code analysis code review code quality and the modular first approach these type of things you have to apply into your implementation then only you can implement avoid the technical depth into your implementation and other uh, important topic was the hipaa compliance right so hipaa compliance generally will be applying if you are working on a any healthcare domain like if you are working for a, any client they are having a hospital or so they are having a uh, they are making any drugs right so there is the hipaa compliance is uh, applied so hipaa is a you can say that a industry term like a gdpr there is a hipaa compliance on the healthcare domain so now there was the some client called a mid mat touch right so site ko cms have been used and they have uh, implemented a patient health information system right not the hpc healthcare professional system with the help of a site ko and they have uh, applied all the hipaa compliance so who needs to take care about hipaa it means that groups of people that are working in the application including the contractor or employees all needs to take care of the hipaa compliance for example if you are a service provider and you are working for any hello am i audible yes ahmed yeah so suppose if you are a uh, working for any healthcare uh, service provider company as a service provider then you also needs to take care of hipaa compliance or you are working as a contractor also then you also needs to be take care of the hipaa compliance so some uh, requirement of the hipaa is data applied on the data transmitted and the uh, storage part so it means that prevent misuse of the data training about using data limiting employee access to the data like a document process of security audit trail these things you need to take care so suppose if you are working for any 
medical brand related website and you are releasing it so they are also for each and every site which is going live you need to take the fda approval right that is also part of the hipaa compliance so that you are not giving any false information or any wrong information to the patient so e- even in that type of review even a single dot or apostrophe s is very important so without that you cannot release your website and for each review you will be getting a unit number that you need to display to your website so all these things will be coming into the picture so if you are a hosting doing the hosting also then hosting partner needs to sign a business associate agreement also that is also a part of the hipaa compliance it means right whatever the technical teams involved into that in terms of the infrastructure development management all needs to be you know, all are by part of the hipaa compliance so means what is their facility security access control system they are having the uh, implementation partner the impact on the site core partner is like that they also need to sign a business associate agreement with the client and they also need to showcase what are type of document security policies are there and what is the code review policies so all these are the part of the hipaa compliance so after that uh, we were having it was a uh, four day event including the last one and a half day of the uh, site code mvp so we were having a, a visit to the uh, it was the universal studio it was a sponsor by the uh, veltech so they have taken care a whole of the uh, whoever attended as a part of the symposium so half of the universal studio was booked for the only the site code people and you can take as as right so this is the jermy davis so you can connect with the many site code people to connect and you can share in knowledge you can gain in knowledge with them so after every meeting or you can say that after every session there was a common lobby was there you can interact with all of the uh, site code people so i connected with the gopi itself there gopi came from the new zealand so kamru was there and there was a one guy from the us was there so we all were we were meeting first time with each other except gopi right so you can make a networking there so this is the chris uh, he is currently working as a senior solution architect in the epam canada and uh, he is more into an ideas into the content hub if you are having any of the queries related to the content hub you can connect directly in the content hub channel in the slack and uh, this is the nb experience i had for uh, sponsored into the nb experience so they have taken all the site for mvps into the nb experience for the two or three hours so these all are the site for mvps uh, for the 2019 so all are par- participated who joined the site for uh, symposium this year last year and they were the special cookies from the site for it for the mvps so these are the some pictures uh, of the universal studio and i have taken a reference uh, of the because some people are attending digital and they are attending and they are publishing the articles on the same date so i have taken a reference uh, of that uh, uh, article so any questions for me hello yeah we're just waiting i guess no questions right now so if anyone has any questions you can always reach out to amit on uh, any of the channels that are mentioned on the screen so yes yeah, i think that should do it thank you amit thank you so much for taking the time yeah. and sharing thanks a lot thanks a lot to all for attending on the weekend okay thanks right. a lot thank you so much thank you bye bye, bye.